DIYers, what's going on? Mike Boars with the Mike Boars channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking boats today. And have you ever wondered what those anodes on your boat engine do or the purpose? We're going to talk about that in this video. Let's get started. DIYers, here we are at the workstation and in-house. A special thanks to my mom and dad's, their 2003 Sea-Doo GTX direct injection, a 951 engine, and it is also a two-stroke engine. Coming over here, here is our 1995 Sea-Doo XP. Let me take the cover off and show you. Check out that stand. And there it is with the cover off. Again, 1995 Sea-Doo XP. And on the left-hand side on the floor is our indoor use only cover. And on the bottom right side is our outdoor use only cover. You can tell a big difference. The one on the right side for outside has taken a beating over the years in the sun and weather. And the one on the left, thankfully, looks brand new. However, DIYers, if you are into jet skiing, we are going to have a link scrolling above right now. We will also post that link down below in the comments and description, and that is to a playlist that contains a large amount of helpful DIY repair videos on jet skis. And if you own an older or classic or vintage style jet ski, chances are it's a two-stroke engine, like the one inside here. In our case, we have this 717 Twin Carb two-stroke engine. And if you have not learned yet, I'm going to share it with you. Finding a dealership or shop or any outside technician to work on a two-stroke engine is becoming more and more difficult. In other words, it's almost basically gone. And DIYers, that is where we hope to come into play. We are filming and producing as much helpful DIY repair videos on two-stroke jet ski engines. So if you own one now, or if you've got a friend or family member that owns one, or if you plan on purchasing one, check out that playlist link that we provided above as well as down below and reach out to us anytime you have any questions. Again, we will do our best to answer your questions and provide you very good, helpful content on working on two-stroke jet ski engines. And real quick to a different camera angle in the event that you are curious where I store the exterior or outside use only cover. That's all I do. Put it right there. And then I put the indoor use only cover over it and store it for the winter. Making our way around the jet ski DIYers, we are always busy here. And upcoming project, now that the outdrive is no longer in this spot, it is now reinstalled on our boat. This is our 1996 Dino Air, and we are going to restore it. However, to the workbench, here are our just recently removed anodes. Check that out. This is the cavitational plate, which is on the rear portion of the outdrive. And then we have our bell housing and transom anode. Look how corroded that is. It did its job. And then you've got these two little circular anodes, which are on either side of the lower transom, one on starboard and one on port side. And again, look at this. And DIYers, I'll be honest, do your best not to allow them to get this bad. Look at that. Taking a look at these, they really did their job and attracted or absorbed as much of the corrosion as possible over the years. And here is our brand new anode kit, the OEM Quicksilver part number. And in the event that you have a Gen 2 or Bravos, you have an additional anode. So take note of that. And again, we operate in fresh water, not salt water. So we went with magnesium. DIYers, here we are on the computer. And again, I'm going to show you a couple photos as we move through this video and explain the purpose of your anode kit that's installed on your outdrive and transom. However, if you've got an outboard as opposed to an outdrive, Believe it or not, you do have anodes as well, but in most cases, they are not exposed. And with that said, let's talk about the photo right here. It's a picture of the Quicksilver anode kit that has the part number and the picture of the anodes. Both these circular anodes that go on either side of your transom, one on starboard, one on port, and to the right of that, the larger block anode, which is your transom anode or bell housing anode, and that is secured on the very bottom of your transom and mates with your hydraulic system distributor that both your starboard and port side hydraulic lines that feed off your trim rams are secured into. And then below that, you have your cavitational plate anode, and that is on the furthest outward or aft portion of your outdrive. And we'll talk more about the cool benefits of that as we go through this video. However, real quick, the reason I'm using photos during this portion of the video is because we're going back in time. And what I mean by that, DIYers, is we have already removed our entire old anode kit and installed this brand new anode kit on the transom and outdrive. However, I did want to go back in time and film this video to explain the purpose of the anode kit and give you a better familiarization and understanding of the purpose of them. 
Again, what is the purpose of your anode kit? In engineering terms, it helps protect the gear case housing from corrosion by providing a hydrodynamic trim force to your outboard or outdrive in our case and stern drive to aid steering. And that aid in steering part comes with this little part right here, the cavitational plate. Believe it or not, the engineers are very smart by adding a cavitational plate anode on the back of your outdrive that serves as a dual purpose. It also acts as a trim tab. And again, we'll talk about that here shortly. However, with that more engineering definition of the purpose of anode kit, let's dive a little deeper to more of a 101 understanding or explanation that we can understand. Whether it's an outdrive or an outboard, DIYers, once it's placed into the water for use, you need to protect it. Once your outdrive or outboard is submerged in water, believe it or not, it is creating the same characteristics as a battery, which consists of two different metals creating a voltage or charge. And you've got the cathode and you've got the anode. The anodes are the anodes you see in this photo. And once both the cathode and anode are submerged in water, the transference of the two metals submerged in the water creates a unique style of charge or voltage, again, just like a battery. And DIYers, with that said, it is very safe to say the engineers have solved the equation for you when it comes to protecting your outboard or outdrive when it's submerged in the water. The engineers have added a less noble metal, which in our case we're looking at it right here, the anodes. And during the engineering process, they picked where exactly to have the anodes positioned and installed on either the outdrive or outboard, as well as your transom and bell housing area. And once installed, the anodes become the sacrificed metal or the weak link in the system, ultimately being the metal and exact location that the charge or voltage will attack. And we like to call this the corrosion attraction point or location, right? Just think about it, if you buy a used boat and the anodes are very old or have never been replaced altogether, there is a very good chance that they look extremely corroded. And that's a good thing. They are working as designed. That's the whole purpose in engineering behind the anode kit. And with that little bit of info, let's dive even more deeper. As the charge or voltage is being produced and is in effect, the anodes are again the less noble metal being sacrificed for failure which in return allows the more noble metal of your entire transom assembly, your bell housing, your outdrive, to be protected and not attacked by the charge or voltage. In other words, the charge knows exactly where the weak link is in the system and because of that, it goes directly to it and attacks it. And I want to go to a different photo. As you see right here, the two cavitational plates. And on the left hand side, the old cavitational plate anode that came off our outdrive. And on the right side, the brand new one that was installed. Now the design is different, but they're the same part number. They are the same OEM replacement. However, the anode on the right has a superseded design to it. And I want to go to a different photo. In this photo, we're looking at all of our anodes that we removed. And on the bottom right side is our brand new anode block that goes on the bottom portion of our transom. And as you can see, significant difference in the two, right? However, I want to talk about this anode right here, as well as these up here. These anodes are stationary. They never move. However, your cavitational plate anode, which again is installed on your outdrive, is always in motion when the outdrive is moving. Example would be trimming the outdrive up, trimming it down, turning it left, turning it right, and so forth. And this is your cavitational plate right here. Again, stationary anodes and constant moving anode. And our brand new transom and bell housing anode is stationary. In addition, talking about the cavitational plate, this anode serves a dual purpose as we just talked about a minute ago. Number one, it serves as the weak link metal on the outer portion of the outdrive. And number two, it serves a beneficial addition to the outdrive by assisting in directional control. And it's able to do that due to the engineered shape and design of it and where it is exactly installed on the outdrive. In other words, it acts as a trim tab. Pretty cool, right? In our opinion, definitely. And I want to go to the next photo and back to a photo of the two cavitational plates, the old on the left, the new on the right. Again, a significant difference as you can see. And let's get a better close up view of a recently removed anode. And again, looking at that DIYers, it did its job. When it was installed on the outdrive, the outdrive itself is in very good condition for being 30 plus years old. Now, if you've seen any of our recent videos, you did notice that the outdrive was missing some paint, that's okay. It had some scuffs and scratches, as well as a little bit of pinning, but it wasn't corroded to a point where it was falling apart. And that is because, again, the anode's doing their job. Now let's talk about the three different styles or designs of anodes. Number one, magnesium. Number two, zinc. And number three, aluminum. Now let me go to a different photo. And here we are back to the original photo we started out with. And right up here, you can see magnesium anode for fresh water use only. 
And again, that's option number one. If you are operating in fresh water, do yourself and your outdrive a favor. Purchase a magnesium anode kit. And you can look deeper into why that is the best option, but I'll just give you a basic understanding. And that is, fresh water is less conducive than salt water. Magnesium anodes are the best choice because they're more active and less noble than zinc or aluminum. And they will protect your outdrive and engine parts more effectively. So again, if you're operating in fresh water, go the magnesium anode kit route. We will have a link down below in the comments and description on where to purchase this kit. However, moving on to option number two, which is zinc, this is for salt water use only. In other words, never install a magnesium anode kit to an outdrive or outboard that is operating in salt water and vice versa. Never install a zinc anode kit to an outboard or outdrive that's going to be operating in fresh water. And the reason zinc came into the picture during the engineering of anodes was again they needed a metal that was best suited for a wink link or noble metal in salt water. And during the engineering process they found zinc to be the preferred choice of metal to act as that sacrificed metal. And that is because the alloy is less resistant to salt water's electrolytes. In addition the zinc stops the oxidation happening to the other metals which in our case is the outboard and outdrive as the zinc anode kit dissolves away or again attracts all of the corrosion as the outdrive and outboard are submerged and creating that charge or voltage like characteristic like a battery and again that is zinc and used for salt water now the third option can be used for both fresh water and salt water and that is aluminum and this can be a controversial conversation amongst marinas and technicians but hey that's okay aluminum is a more cost friendly option for anode kits for your boat and again, the aluminum anode kit can be used for either fresh water or salt water. However, there are pros and cons to it. The aluminum anodes are lighter, which makes them cheaper and obviously more eco-friendly, right, compared to magnesium and zinc. However, with those pros comes cons. They will need regular cleaning to avoid passivation. And let's be honest, DIYers, if you've got aluminum anodes on your outboard or outdrive, no one cleans them, right? You just operate the boat, and when you're done, that's it. You don't go back and clean your anodes. Or in our case, we've never met anyone that does that. So because of that, the lack of cleaning of aluminum anodes, if that's what you have installed on your outdrive, they're not going to last as long compared to the more heavy or reliable metal of magnesium or zinc. However, with magnesium and zinc anodes, there's obviously cons to it. They are more toxic to the environment, but again, much more reliable. But back to the aluminum anode kit, if you go that route, again, it's going to be cheaper, more cost-friendly, and lighter. And the electrochemical capacity is more than three times higher than the mass of zinc, which a 101 clarification of that is the aluminum anode can protect a larger range of your outdrive without being larger in size. In addition, aluminum anodes usually provide a better distribution of current compared to zinc or magnesium. So again, that's basically a 101 definition or explanation of the three options. Again, freshwater operation, go magnesium. Saltwater operation, go zinc. And if you want to clean your anodes on a regular basis and replace them earlier than the other option, go aluminum. And real quick, here's a photo of the periodic table, and I want to reference each of the metal. We'll start with the first one, magnesium, and as you can see, number 12, here is MG, magnesium, and you can see by the color, if we come up here, it is an alkaline earth metal. And the second option, again, we talked about is zinc, and that will be number 30, ZN, and as you can see with the purple color, that is a transition metal, and just above and over of that is number 13, AL Aluminum. And by the lighter pink color, you can see it falls under the other metals category. Again, magnesium, zinc, and aluminum. And back to this photo. In the event that you have the question, well, when should I replace my anodes? Well, that will refer to your exact serial number service manual. In our case, ours says at 50% of its life, which I think is extremely standard across the board in the entire boating industry. So with all that said, that's all I want to show you on the computer with the pictures. From here, let's head out to the boat to get a view of the outdrive and our newly installed anode kit. Here we are in the garage, and this is my grandma's 1989 glass port. And inside, it's got a 3.0 Mercruiser inboard and an Alpha 1 Gen 1 on the back. Let's take a look. To the back of the boat, again, Alpha 1 Gen 1. We have fully rebuilt this entire outdrive, top to bottom, upper, lower, everything in between, propeller, etc. Trim rams. Brand new hydraulic lines and more. And what we'll do is we will direct our attention to the bell housing or lower transom anode and the two small anodes on either side, starboard and port side. 
Now to a close-up view of the lower starboard side of our transom. And again, these are the hydraulic lines or hoses that feed off of the trim ram and into the hard-mounted fittings that are directly in between the lower bell housing and transom anode and the lower portion of the transom. And I want to direct our attention to this starboard side anode. And as you can see, what a significant difference from the one we just showed you on the workbench. And again, we chose magnesium because that is the best suited designed anode kit for freshwater operation. And as you can see right here, which you really couldn't see on the anode that we showed you inside at the workbench just a moment ago, these little engineered flat spots are for a wrench. And it's important to know that those flat spots are purposely engineered on your anode. However, again, looking at the one we just showed you on the workbench, you really couldn't see those flat spots because of the amount of corrosion that each of those circular anodes absorbed over the years. So again, just know that they are there in the event that you are replacing your anodes and you cannot see the flat spots, just take a moment and look very closely at the anode itself and try to find those flat spots so you can get a wrench on it and turn it counterclockwise and remove it. Again, both starboard and port side have those little anodes. And DIYers, those screw off very easily. And in between this anode and the transom is a rubber washer and you will get a brand new rubber washer with your kit. So make sure you remove the old one and make sure you clean not only the threaded stud that the anode secures onto, but also the gap in between where the rubber washer will go and the transom. That will definitely go a long way. And what I wanna do now is reposition the camera to that larger bell housing and transom anode below. And there it is, now to a close-up view of again, the larger anode located at the very bottom portion of your transom. And as you can see, there are two bolts. And in our case, those are 7 16 in size, and it is very friendly to remove it. And all you'll do is grab your ratchet and a 7 16 socket and turn those bolts counterclockwise to remove your old anode. In addition, in between the anode and the hard mounted fitting that the hydraulic hoses feed into is a gasket. And DIYers, it is important to remove 100% of that gasket. And in the event that you remove your anode and half of it is stuck to the top portion or inner portion of your anode and the other half is stuck to the upper hard mounted block or distributor, carefully peel it off and your new kit will come with a brand new gasket. And looking at that, as you can see, compared to the one we just showed you inside of the workbench, what a significant difference. The torch has been passed and the new anodes are ready to carry it from there. Here we are coming port side. I do want to show you the port side anode. And as you can see, just within close proximity of the anode, the transom itself does have a little bit of pitting and loss of paint, but that's okay compared to what the outdrive could be looking like in the event that we did not have anodes. I couldn't even imagine. Again, this boat's 30 years old and the outdrive itself has never been repainted or anything. And it looks really good. Taking a step back and DORs, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you and cover in this video. We hope this helps. And in addition, for your convenience, if you are working on your outdrive, we are going to post several helpful links down below in the comment section as well as the description section, which include part one of our full bellows replacement project. We will also post a link on the upper unit rebuild and a separate link on the lower unit rebuild. And why not, we'll also put the step-by-step -step process videos on how to properly and safely replace both your starboard and port side trim ramps and the respective hydraulic hoses. In addition, we'll have a video link on how to air bleed your hydraulic trim system to get all of that air out of your hydraulic hoses and trim ramps, ultimately allowing the trim ramps and hydraulic trim system to operate as designed. So again, DIY, several helpful videos. We hope this helps. Hey, do us a favor. Below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.